Measurement. Everyone seems to be talking about measurement. I've really lost count of a number of measurement initiatives underway. Help us understand what's really happening. Why is there so much focus and attention on measurement at the moment? What are all these initiatives trying to achieve? Well, yes, you're absolutely right. I actually wrote a byline this summer counting up um, at least 16 different initiatives. And I, I think I probably missed a few of the proprietary ones that um, you know, either media companies or vendors or agencies or marketers aren't even talking about. Um, but I, of the ones that you know, I do know about, I, I think there's several reasons for this. Um, one is just you know the increased fragmentation. I mean, this this has been inevitable for a while, but it's just becoming more and more urgent as there's more and more fragmentation, and as the current measurement companies can't capture all the fragmentation, um, they haven't really been able to. Uh, come up with the right solutions that everyone can agree on technically and also from a business point of view because you know these once you start changing measurement and changing currencies and the way that cross-platform media is bought and sold you know it has huge business implications and so it's not just a, a technical issue for researchers um, and this was one of the first things I learned after you know, you know, Sim's been around for 10 years. And I will say that after a few years, I was, I kind of realized, oh, this isn't just about measurement and technical issues. This is, these are really business issues. And, and I think the other thing that is uh, huge in this last year is the marketers have gotten involved. Um, this has been maybe the last two years through uh, the WFA. Uh, they become increasingly impatient with uh, getting, you know, ad impression data out of the big digital platforms, you know, Google and Facebook, and uh, having the ability to dedupe those impressions so they can really understand, uh, you know, unduplicated reach and frequency. And they want to actually, you know, help use that to manage the frequency because I think they're very concerned about, you know, clutter and too much advertising and too much frequency. Uh, so, so that's been huge. They've done a lot of work in the last two years through the WFA coming up with a framework, a blueprint, a technical blueprint uh, that they've gotten the big platforms to actually help design, you know, and agree upon. Um, the only issue is that, you know, that particular initiative now has to incorporate local media because uh, you don't have a census of ad impressions in television in most markets that you can then combine and, and dedupe with Google and Facebook. So it's, there's a lot of complex technical issues there. But the, the good news is that the marketers who have not really been that involved up until now um, are heavily uh, involved now. And there seem to be various different standards for cross-platform media measurements starting to emerge. Are you positive and optimistic that these standards will eventually achieve some consensus about how best to move forwards? Or actually, are we going to see a proliferation of different measurement solutions and standards, but possibly a more complex and confusing market? I think to some extent you could see both of those. You know, I think there there will be some standards. So the, the two big challenges in cross-media measurement are getting to comparable metrics so that everybody's defining their ad impressions the same way, you know, that it, it started at the second and, uh, and I started my counting and I have this many seconds or this average of seconds and, you know, the time-weighted duration or however the industry decides to finally settle on what that measure is um, and, you know, and when it ended and how much of the ad was seen. Uh, and so I think w once you get to a measure, uh, you know, everyone agrees on that. And I do think that the MRC in the U.S. and, and others around the world are, are making progress with those definitions. Um, but the second big issue is the, I, uh, the ID resolution of all, you know, of the impressions across all these platforms. And that's very complicated. And it's getting more and more complicated because of privacy. And cookies are going away, and you know, mobile IDs are going away, and um, Google and Facebook have new ways of looking at this. And so, there's progress that the WFA group is making um, with having Google and Facebook design a privacy compliant way that they will agree uh, to share their 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 data so that no one um, 
ever sees the actual data. It's all kind of virtualized, these virtual IDs that they're talking about. Um, but it's not quite so simple because you know, Google and Facebook have authenticated users who log on. They have a lot of data about their users, uh, their individuals. You know, people know a lot about them. You start getting to other media and you don't have these authenticated users. You don't know as much about people on the open web. Um, in television, we have households uh, and devices and people, and not all that data uh, is all connected, you know, with, with the high quality ID graphs so that you can connect the people and the devices and the households. And so those issues are really still being sorted out, you know, and so, some of them may be open sourced, some of them may be, uh, you know, individual vendors who have uh, ID graphs and, and solutions there. Um, and, and I think the, the sort of second part of your question there is we may not all get to kind of one currency. Um, I mean, definitely not a cross platform, but uh, you know, even within television and premium video, um, most people now believe that there's so many different data streams coming from so many different ways that you can buy TV and premium video you know, from linear to addressable, to data-driven linear, to VOD, to, S, to AVA, to OTT, to, you know, all forms of digital video, that, uh, you know, the, the challenge is not only getting that data normalized and standardized, but putting it all together, deduplicating, you know, that through ID resolution. And that's, that's not simple and different people may come up with slightly different ways to do the ID resolution if you if you don't have all the data. Uh, and, and, and everyone owns their data now. So it's hard for any one vendor to get all the data. So I, I am hearing more and more people believing that there's going to be kind of a so-called basket of currencies, you know, different marketers may want different measurement um, from each other. And so uh, vendors networks, you know, agencies are being more flexible about uh, the kinds of measurement that they can offer to a marketer to show the impact, you know, of their campaign. It, it, it may not all be, even within TV and premium video, you know, one system like we have now. And that, to me, feels like it would certainly be consistent with what we're seeing in the attribution space, for example, where we have a range of different attribution vendors, not all of whom are good at the same set of things. And if you're an agency looking to run some sort of attribution testing on a campaign, you have to spend some time working out which solution is best for your client and for the particular metrics you're looking at. Yeah, and actually, Sim just finished um, a big project in TV attribution, and uh, you can uh, get the white paper on our um, website. And we took nine different vendors uh, and five different campaigns um, and tried to answer that question of why you get different results when you use different vendors. And, and we just kept it narrow into one kind of category of TV tune-in because we were just trying to control for everything else and try to test for um, some of the input data, the, the simple ad occurrence data and the you know, ad exposure, ad tuning data, um, which all comes from different sources. Um, and what, but did, what did you really what did you really learn what's the answer well the what we learned i mean the weird thing in the us is we don't have an ad measurement system right now you know we don't have um all of our television measurement is based off of the c3 rating it was calculated by nielsen which averages all the ads in an entire show so regardless of pod position or you know uh which pod you're in in the show or anything it just averages everything they all get the same number um, and so that's starting to fall apart with this whole fragmented world because of addressable and all of the, the digital, you know, forms of media where everything is ad based. And so in order to put all this together, um, the industry is going to have to move to an ad measurement system. But as it is now, all these attribution vendors are just getting they're verifying which ads ran when from a series of services that are not really audited and accredited for this. Uh, and even the ad logs at the networks we found 
um, have errors <laughs> in them <laughs> and they're not audited. <laughs> so, so, you know, there's just, we've never really had to be that accountable uh, to, to add measurement here in the US. So I think what we're learning from all these TV attribution companies and just bringing more transparency into this process is that we need to have a much, um, you know, more standardized, I hate to keep using that word, but it, it really does have to be, uh, you know, something that can be audited and accredited to actually verify that ads ran when they ran. <laughs> um, to have ad IDs that they're the same ad, you know, on all the places that they ran. I mean, there's a bunch of, of kind of plumbing issues that that need to to be fixed as as TV becomes more like digital and and more automated. I guess the positive thing is that there are lots of initiatives underway to try and solve these problems. I guess the difficulty is, and we've seen this particularly in the last six to nine months, consumer behavior is changing very quickly and. I think people sometimes say that you can either be fast or you can be right, but it's very hard to be both fast and right um, and to audit and accredit and do all of these things quickly and effectively when there are lots of parties involved. It's, it's complicated. Yeah, no, and I think that's what's happened too in a lot of media is technology and consumers move faster than, you know, kind of the standards and the, the auditing and the transparency that, that follows, you know, there's a lot of, uh, digital light companies now coming into the television world. Now that we have data, you know, we have all this set top box and smart TV data that nobody ever had before, where you actually can show that an ad ran and that an, a, a household at least, at least had the TV set tuned or the set top box, you know, tuned at that time. Everyone's always quibbling about, does that really mean that there was someone in front of that, that tuning event? But anyway, we can show that, you know, uh, ads ran in those households and then people can bring other data from other uh, either first party data from advertisers or third party sales or search data or website visitation data. There's so many different data sets that different uh, marketers want to match to this data the same way they've been doing it digital for years. And so now all of a sudden television has this way to show the show its impact the way th that digital has been able to and so it's moving faster than the standards that are being used to kind of make sure that it's all being done, you know, in a high quality way and that everyone's following all the right standards. And, you know, it, it will follow um, because the marketers, you know, will demand that uh, uh, all of these new evolving services and, uh, you know, and sources of data, um, you know, be, become normalized and standardized and comparable.